Good morning, students. Yesterday we started the new lesson, Independent India. The first thirty years, nineteen forty-seven to nineteen seventy-seven. So we got the independence on fifteenth August, nineteen forty-seven. So at the time, some major challenges were there before the leadership of India. They are. maintain the unity and integrity in the country and uh, bring social and economic transformation and the another one is ensure the successful working of the democratic system so to continue the democracy so first they introduced elections and they conducted first elections in 1952 okay so how the they brought uh, social and economic transformation we will discuss in this class okay next social and economic change to bring the social and economic change uh, the planning commission was set up after the inauguration of the new constitution we inaugurated a new constitution on january 26 1950 so on that day we celebrate republic day every year okay before independence all the um, people of the country depend on mostly in agriculture major people lived in um, villages and very uh, very few urban areas were there okay so what is the meaning of social and economic reforms so that is more important social and economic change at the top of the agenda of modern india so according to nehru planning was not only about good economics but good politics as well so without a uh, change in politics so we cannot achieve the economical growth in especially in rural areas so he ho he hoped that planned development would dissolve the divisions of caste and religion community and region as well as other dis uh, disruptive and uh, disintegrative tendencies and help india to encourage a strong and modern nation so according to the nehru so what is the meaning of plan development so not only economic development we should dissolve the divisions of caste and religion and community and the region in our country so then only we can achieve the economic growth okay so in that way the first year plan introduced in our country so five years plans we adapted from russia so five years plans were introduced by russia so at the time of constitution requiring constitution so we adopted five year plans from russia and we introduced in india so in the first five years plan focused on agriculture and stressed on the need for increasing food production and the development of transport and the communications and the provision of social services so why because they um focused on, on agriculture in the first uh, five year plan because at the time of independence we are facing the food we were facing the food scarcity so that's why even 90% of the people are depending on agriculture at the time so that's why to 
increase the economy of the uh, village people they stressed on agriculture on the first five year plan okay so so in this five years plan so what are the aims of the first five years plan increase the food production and construct the dams and provide uh, resources to agriculture and uh, uh, allocated resources between industry and agriculture that is the main aim of the first five year plan so to achieve the um, social economical change the nehru introduced land reforms agriculture cooperatives and local self government so in land reforms they introduced three types of land reforms what is the meaning of land reforms so distributing the redistributing the lands to the poor people or landless people that is called the land reforms at the time so many landlords were there zamindars were there all the lands were in the hands of landlords so now the government want to nationalize the lands and they want to redistribute among the poor people that is the meaning of land reforms so to achieve that land reforms three types of land reforms were introduced one is abolition of zamindari system abolition of zamindari system is no zamindars will should be continue so those lands will be taken by the government tenancy reform and land sealing tenancy reform at the time most of the farmers were tenants these were taken lands from the zamindars or landlords and these were cultivated so now as per the tenancy reform the government want to give rights some rights to tenants also and land sealing what is the meaning of land sealing the people should not um, have more lands than land sealing according to land sealing so 70 to 90 acres um, of land can hold by the every farmer if anyone having more than that limit they should hand over the lands to the government that is the meaning of land sealing so to achieve the land reforms at the time jawaharlal nehru government introduced three types of land reforms one is abolition of zamindar system tenancy reform and land sealing act so what are the uh, aims of these land reforms so they want to redistribute the lands to landless people and uh, that should be handed over to the actual tillers and uh, um, when we redistribute that was the incentive for small farmers to produce more okay so and cooperatives were to bring economics of scale and also provide valuable inputs like seeds manure fertilizers and so on so to provide these um, inputs like seeds and manure and fertilizers they established cooperative societies next local self government local self government so people belongs to one village knows about the farmer problems and uh, who are having lands who are not having lands they may know only that's why this redistribution 
responsibility given to local self government only so like that uh, to improve the economy in the villages they introduced different um, policies so land reforms however implemented in a half hearted manner across india so at the time on very less lands were nationalized by the government and uh, um, they distributed among the people uh, very less quantity of land distributed to each person only every farmer got only half acre of land in land reforms okay so most of the uh, zamindars and landlords um, were continued their control on the lands so that's why the land reforms was not implemented properly so through abolition of zamindar system uh, land reforms so some people are benefited from the abolition of forced labor and uh, abolition of untouchability okay next in the first five years plan they try to improve the uh, agriculture by building large dams and uh, irrigation facilities and produce electricity so dams benefited both the agriculture and the industrial sector also next the planners felt that for the country to develop it was essential to develop industries so that more people can shift to towns to work in factories and in the service sector so that's why in the second year second five year plan they focused on industries okay so like that to improve the economy the government introduced different five years plans in our country next foreign policy and wars what is the meaning of foreign policy so how to maintain relation with the neighboring countries is called the foreign policy so when we got the independence at the time world was uh, busy with the uh, um, cold wars and at the time two new powers were emerged usa and ussr so most of the countries are divided into two groups under these two powers but jawaharlal nehru don't want to join with these two powers and he want to maintain equidistant from both the powers so we want to maintain independent position in our foreign policy so at the time jawaharlal nehru um try to um, introduced and started with the help of other countries like indonesia egypt and yugoslavia kyukia so they started non aligned movement so in this uh, movement our government introduced a panchashil policy so according to panchashil policy non interference in each others internal affairs so neighboring neighboring country should not interfere the internal affairs of any country so however india had to face wars during the this period also um we started war we faced war with uh, um, pakistan over kashmir in 1948 and 1965 and uh, over bangladesh issue 
1971 and uh, with china over border issue in 1962 so at the time india was not uh, ready for wars so especially um, the war with uh, china in 1962 because of that we um, lost heavy human loss and money also okay next the succession so after death of nehru the death was um, the nehru was uh, died uh, in 1964 so um, at the time there was a uh, doubts who will uh, take care the responsibility of the india but uh, congress was succeeded uh, by choosing lal bahadur shastri as its leader in the government so when the lal bahadur shastri became the prime minister he was faced major problems major challenges in our country one is or anti hindi agitation led by the dmk and second one is the war with pakistan so um indira gandhi succeeded shastri as prime minister after his untimely death in 1966 next anti hindi agitation so after uh, independence in 1963 the official language act was passed so to communicate with the other states they required one language so at the time um, linguistic states were there fourteen linguistic states and uh, five union territories these were formed based on 1956 linguistic act so every state has their own language so to communicate with the other uh, all the states the central government introduced hindi as the official language so then some other linguistic states like um tamil nadu and other states were opposed that decision okay so they started hesitations strikes dharnas um, hartals and uh, um burning the in the books and uh, constitution in the sign boards were also blackened in many places so like that they started hesitation against the in the language even congress leaders also divided between pro hindi and anti hindi camps so some felt that the unity of the country was at stake but the lal bahadur shastri realized and uh, um, he came with some solutions so these include among others the right of each state to have a language of its own which could be the regional language or english communications could be in regional language with english translations english should continue to be the communication language between the center and the states so and uh, the civil service exams would be conducted in english rather than hindi alone so like this so they showed the um solution to this problem so english uh, accepted as a communication language between state and central clear so like this um the prime minister of india in both cases went out of their way to ensure that things were within control so it was clear for both nehru and shastri 
द यूनिटी ऑफ द नेशन केम फर्स्ट ओवर पर्सनल स्टॉन्ट पॉइंट सो टू यूनाइट द कंट्री सो इवन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स आलसो कॉम्प्रोमाइज एंड दे शोड डिफरेंट सोल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम्स क्लियर विल डिस्कस नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द लेसन इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू